Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, ages ago, MSI and Gigabyte mailed over their Refresh X299 motherboards, designed to take advantage of the Skylake X Refresh, I suppose, although the hype around that series died down faster than a modern AAA title. Anyway, quite some time ago now, I got the MSI Meg X299 creation, this rather big, heavy motherboard here. I got that along with, where is it? It's this one here, the Gigabyte X299 Aorus Master, and that's also a big, heavy motherboard. Anyway, I got these, I unboxed them in our unboxing boxes series, and at the time, a good many of you requested that I do some VRM testing. And well, me being the excellent host that I am, it only took around four months to make it happen. Anyway, in the meantime, ASUS also sent over their new X299 refresh board, the X299 Deluxe 2. So I've added that to our three-way VRM thermal test battle. Yeah, that can be the, the title of the video. Anyway, let's check the boards out, shall we? The new MSI Meg X299 creation is the most expensive X299 motherboard to be featured in this video. Priced at $600 US, it is mighty expensive and it's certainly the most pricey X299 board MSI offers. That said, Gigabyte and ASUS do have more expensive models, but we won't be looking at those in this video. We'll get to those boards in a moment. I did introduce them already. But yeah, they do have more expensive motherboards. This isn't the most extreme, most expensive X299 motherboard out there, but it's certainly one of the most extreme. For now, let's just quickly go over what the creation has to offer. Included on board is a beefy 13 plus one phase VRM, though please note it's a 12 phase vCore VRM. Also included is 2.5 gigabit ethernet along with a gigabit port, plenty of USB 2.1 gen two ports, Wi-Fi module, four PCIe times 16 slots, three M.2 slots with cooling, plus an expander card supporting additional four M.2 drives. Oh, and a Thunderbolt card providing Thunderbolt three 40 gigabits per second ports that provide up to display port 1.2. So in terms of features, it's pretty well got everything. But for those of you throwing in an 18 core Core i9-7980XE or 9980XE, how well does the VRM handle overclocking and does it keep its cool under heavy load? On paper, things look good. It features an IR35201 phase controller, and from that, six signals are outputted to half a dozen IR3599 phase doublers, creating a 12 phase VRM. MSIs use TDA21472 power stages, and these are the same 70 amp parts that they featured on the impressive X399 creation, though there a 16 phase vCore VRM configuration was used. Cooling the power stages is a very modest looking black anodized heatsink, which is connected using a six millimeter heat pipe to an equally modest looking anodized black heatsink. Nothing particularly fancy here, and there's no kind of active cooling present, so it will be interesting to see how well the creation fares in the thermal testing. The ASUS Prime X299 Deluxe is currently retailing for $500 US, and that makes it $100 cheaper than the MSI creation, though there are some noteworthy differences between those two boards. Uh, before we get into that though, I should just quickly point out this isn't the most high-end or most premium X299 motherboard that ASUS offers. That would be the ROG Rampage 6 Extreme Omega. And we recently looked at the X399 version of that board. It also had a really long name that no one remembers. Getting back to the Prime X299 Deluxe 2, ASUS has managed to one-up MSI by including five gigabit ethernet along with a gigabit port. You also get a Wi-Fi module, plenty of USB 3.1 ports, but just two M.2 ports. ASUS does sell an expansion card separately, but it costs $90. So if you include that in the price, then the ASUS and MSI boards effectively have the same retail price. Still in the package, you do get a few cool add-ons such as the fan extension card too. This little module allows you to connect and control up to half a dozen case fans, and it also includes three RGB headers and three thermal sensors. So that's pretty neat, but let's talk about the VRM. ASUS calls this their 12 plus two power stage design, but it's not a 12 phase V core, rather it's a six phase using a doubling of components, but there's no doublers used. And this is a pretty common design theme from ASUS now. So what we have here is an ASP1405 PWM controller, which we've always suspected is a rebadged IR35201. Anyway, as was the case with the MSI board, 
Six signals are taken from the controller. However, each signal isn't then doubled. Instead, it's hooked up directly to a pair of IR355 power stages, each rated at 60 amps. So in total, there's still a dozen power stages, but whereas the MSI board has 12 phases, ASUS's only has six. ASUS believes they are better off avoiding doublers as they introduce latency and higher transient voltage drop. But at the end of the day, all we really care about is how hot the VRM gets when overclocking, and we'll explore that in a moment. For now, let's look at the Gigabyte X299 Aorus Master. By far the cheapest of the three boards is Gigabyte's X299 Aorus Master. Coming in at just $340 US, it's almost half the price of the MSI creation. Yet, despite that, it is a really massive motherboard that's jam-packed with features. On board, you get three M.2 ports with cooling, four PCIe x 16 slots, 2.5 gigabit wide networking, along with a more standard gigabit port, Wi-Fi, high quality audio, and well, the list just goes on. So in terms of board features, it does a good job of matching the more expensive models from MSI and ASUS. The board also looks great and incorporates a heap of nice design features, such as a dual BIOS with a socketed BIOS, and then you get all the connector armor stuff on your PCIe slots, the DIMM slots and the power connectors. You also get a full-sized heat shield on the back side of the board. It's more of a heat spreader than a heat shield, whatever, but it does have thermal pads to extract built up heat on the underside of the PCB. The V-Core VRM is controlled by the ISL69138 controller, and like MSI and ASUS, Gigabyte's taking six signals for the V-Core portion, but unlike ASUS, they have opted to use ISL6617 phase doublers to create 12 phases. This time we find ISL99227 power stages, which are rated for 60 amps. Helping to further reduce VRM operating temperatures is an active fan that's hidden away under the I.O. cover. Gigabyte's also used proper finned heat sinks, and like the other two boards we find, the two heat sinks are connected via a 6mm heat pipe. I have to say, while the heat sinks on the ASUS board looked quite good, I reckon Gigabyte's heat sinks look as though they'll work the best. Okay, so it's time to put the boards to the test, and as usual, I'm going to use Blender. The load results are reported after an hour long stress test of running our blender workload non-stop and then the idle is taken after a 10 minute cooldown period. To record temperatures I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples. I've placed multiple sensors on the surface of multiple power stages to measure the temperature across the VRM and I'll be reporting the highest value. So this means I'm measuring the temperature directly on top of the component between it and the thermal pad and not an internal temperature which is bound to be a bit higher. Still with all boards tested under the exact same conditions this will give us a clear picture of how the VRM temperatures compare. Okay, so first we have the stock 7980XE results inside the Corsair 500D test case. Here all the boards performed very well, keeping VRM temperatures well below 70 degrees. At least this was the maximum recorded surface temperature of the power stages. The ASUS Prime actually provided the best result at a mere 53 degrees. The creation was just 4 degrees hotter, and then the Gigabyte board was another 6 degrees hotter. And that was quite surprising, I have to say. Then placing K-type thermocouples on the back side of the PCB below the power stages, it was again the Gigabyte Aorus Master that recorded the highest temperature. Again, I was very surprised by this, particularly given it has that massive backplate complete with thermal pads. Okay, so now we've overclocked the 7980XE to 4.5 GHz using 1.2 volts, and I've adjusted the load line calibration of each board so it held this voltage throughout our testing. Here we see some pretty drastic changes from the stock results. The MSI Creation, for example, ran 15 degrees hotter, hitting a peak of 72 degrees. But it was the ASUS X299 Deluxe 2 results that were the most shocking. Here the board's VRM temperature increased by an incredible 43 degrees, peaking at 96 degrees. This doesn't seem possible given what we saw from the MSI board, but I'll get to that in a moment. For now, let's talk about the Aorus Master. Here we saw a 31 degree rise in temperature from the overclock, and this resulted in a peak temperature of 94 degrees. It's not great, but it is a pass, if only just. Now, after initially finding the ASUS results a bit hard to believe, I went back and retested, resetting everything, including the thermal probes, and just started over. A few hours later, I found the exact same result, a peak temperature in the high 90s. It seems to me as though the enormous current requirements of the overclock 7980XE is pushing the ASUS 6-phase VRM well out of its efficiency window, and as you can see, this just results in really high operating temperatures. And things aren't any better on the underside of the PCB either, and interestingly we see no change in temperature for the MSI board. Meanwhile the ASUS and Gigabyte boards were a little bit hotter. 
The Gigabyte board is particularly surprising here as I did find late last year that Gigabyte Z390 motherboards with the large thermal backplate really excelled in this test, but here the X299 Aorus Master appears to see no benefit from the backplate, so that's very disappointing. Well, there you have it. The results really do speak for themselves. That said, there are a few things worth keeping in mind. While the MSI X299 creation was by far the best performer when it came to VRM thermals, and it was even very easy to overclock with, uh, it's worth keeping in mind that I was testing with an 18 core 7980XE, and all the boards did pass all our stress testing and all that stuff without any stability issues, any crashing, or really any issues at all. So what I'm trying to say is if you don't plan on purchasing an $1,800 US processor and something like the 10-core Core i9 a 9820X, for example, for $900 is more what you seek, then blowing $600 plus on an X299 motherboard uh, isn't exactly required. Of course, if you're intending on overclocking any of the 14, 16, or 18-core parts to the max, then I do highly recommend looking at the MSI X299 creation. The ASUS Prime X299 Deluxe didn't really impress me much, particularly for a $500 motherboard. The feature set is decent, but in a few areas it does come up short, even compared to the much cheaper Aorus Master. So I'm struggling to find a reason to recommend it beyond the fact that ASUS does do an excellent job with their BIOS. For me, the Gigabyte X299 Aorus Master really impressed, and at just $340 US, it is hard to beat. Yes, it does have an active fan, and the VRM components aren't the best, they're certainly not bad, they're just not the best. But again, you're not paying top dollar either. Overall, the build quality and board design was excellent. The feature set's impressive, and it did handle the overclock 7980XE without showing any signs of instability. It just got a little hot under the collar doing it. Overall, the MSI Meg X299 creation, it's a beast, and I really do highly recommend this motherboard uh, for anyone looking for the ultimate X299 board. Although the ASUS ROG Rampage 6 Extreme Omega might also be worth checking out, but I'd, I'd certainly pass on the, the Deluxe 2 board that I've moved over to the side there. Um, then as an affordable sort of all-rounder, I suppose, you really can't go past the Gigabyte X299 Aorus Master. And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate what we do at Hiram Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.